In today's video we are going to explore Asheville, its music scene, its nightlife, also the Biltmore Estate and the Blue Ridge Parkway. Traveling Robert is next. I'm riding, 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 riding with my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be, because I'm free. In my RV, yeah. We're staying here at the Asheville East KOA, very conveniently located. Since it is on the way, at first we're gonna pass by the Blue Ridge Parkway Visitor Center to get some information since we want to do a section of the road later on. America's favorite drive. The Visitor Center, by the way, is actually very nice. Lots of information about the road, the wildlife, the history. These are glorious days that shall never be forgotten. And they have this really high-tech map here in the back, in which the screen is like an augmented reality magnifying lens with multimedia. Very cool. Where is it? The billboard. That's where we're going tomorrow. Asheville area. <laughs> They probably spent a lot of money on this. Next, we passed by the Biltmore Village on the way to downtown. Let's check it out. Historic Biltmore Village. Nowadays, it is an upscale shopping area with the historic theme. Although, the historic aspect is apparently very real. This was originally designed as a planned community for workers of the Piltmore Estate. Very nice, very luxurious. Apparently it is inspired by a European hunting lodge. Here's uh, the valet parking area. Yeah, very fancy. The Biltmore Estate is that way, but we are going tomorrow. Well, enough of the Grand Bohemian. Let's continue. Fancy shops. They had like normal size cookies, we would have gotten one for sure, but all the pastries are huge and we are saving our appetite for dinner later. We really came for the coffee. We continue towards downtown. We park here and near the Pinball Museum and the Grove Arcade. Today, however, we are not going to visit the Pinball Museum. But the Grove Arcade is supposed to be one of Asheville's architectural jewels dating back to the late 1920s. It kind of reminds me of the covered passages in Paris. It's in a downward slope going down. And you can go to the upper floors. Hmm, an old-fashioned bookstore. Yep, definitely there is a French, or at least a very European vibe going on here, for sure. A book exchange. All these tables here, originally we thought would be very convenient to set down your drink or your champagne glass, but there are vendors, apparently, uh, that set up shop here. Amazing pub cycle, but I don't get the point of pedaling while getting drunk. I don't know. Maybe we'll stop at one of these places later. But first, we want to explore a little more. We are walking towards uh, this building here called the Flat Iron, which is kind of reminiscent of the one in New York. Well, there you go, 
found a safe space. Yeah, it is a very cool neighborhood. Lots of cafes all over the place. Here's the famous iron sculpture in front of the aforementioned flat iron building. Hmm, I hear music. Come on in here, you all. Yep, these guys are pretty good. Papa Vey Landers. I was reading uh, the lead singer Vaden Landers has studied American folk styles such as old time, country, blues, Cajun, jug. Uh, yeah, these guys are the real deal, not your run of the mill street musicians. And uh, I was I looked them up and they are booked solid pretty much every week at different venues in the area. Yeah, I want to go see them the next time I'm around here, for sure. The banjo could use a little bit of tuning, in my opinion, but that's okay. Oh yeah, I love this music. I'm fascinated actually. We continue walking. <laughs> The Thomas Wolf Auditorium, which is home of the Asheville Symphony Orchestra. <laughs> The Basilica of St. Lawrence, very famous, built in 1905. Wasn't that a wonderful musical interlude? Well, we're going back to the Grove Arcade. Uh, we saw this place that had $4 happy hour wine special. And this here seems to be some kind of community, communal garden. Pretty cool. We're getting close. Here we are. <laughs> Very local atmosphere. The, the bartender actually seems to know everybody. Thursday, four dollar house wine. And there's the basilica. And here's Kia. Let's go. Hey, las palomitas, palomitas, get out of the way. The obelisk in the distance is the Vans Memorial. Okay, Hollywood Street. And zero point two miles. No, it's Hollywood Street. Oh, Haywood. destination will be on the right. What is this? We're going to this other area of downtown by Biltmore Avenue, actually also called Broadway in this segment, and we are looking for parking.
And here it is again, the Vance Memorial, which honors a Zebulon Baird Vance. Since Vance owned slaves and he was a Confederate colonel during the Civil War, well, this is one of those Confederate monuments that may not be here much longer. It is sort of on that list of offensive monuments to be removed. And here we have more street musicians. Very musical city from what I can tell so far. We've also got a juggler. This area east of where the memorial is located is called Pack Square, located at the intersection of ancient trading paths. It is supposed to be the symbolic center of Asheville. Here's also Pack Square, looking towards the courthouse and the mayor's office. Asheville's first skyscraper, the Jackson Building, dating back to 1924. Okay, let's go eat. Yep, definitely a very musical city. stand here for hours, but we're getting really hungry now. Maybe we should have had that cookie earlier. We actually have this tapas place in mind. You wanna cure yourself? Never mind, that was a two-hour wait time, so next time we're in Nashville. Well, instead of the two-hour wait at Curate, we are going to go to this other place called the Blackbird. We begin with the bottle of wine because that's how we roll. You know, an Italian Barbera di Alba, a very nice uh, bread, and very small portions. The chicken and the tenderloin. And the cake. Huh? Coconut cake. We definitely should have had that cookie. Good morning from the Asheville East KOA. Very peaceful in the morning here with the fog-covered lake. Today we plan to visit the Biltmore, which is pretty much the main tourist attraction here in Asheville. It was built by George Vanderbilt with architect Richard Morris Hunt and landscape artist Frederick Law Olmsted. And it is an 8,000-acre estate, very large, with the largest privately owned home in the whole United States. Good morning to you too. The ducks, they come visit the campers in the morning. Yeah, this one came for leftovers. Yeah, that train woke us up all night. They ran like three times last night. Yeah, I wonder if it is a requirement that they build campgrounds right next to railroads. You know what I mean. It is a beautiful campground, though. Now we're going to go see the Biltmore. Well, enough ducking around. Let's go. <laughs> After getting the tickets, we have to drive to a parking lot and from there they shuttle us the rest of the way to the Biltmore house. 43 bathrooms, but you won't be able to use any of those. 
On the right hand side of the house you'll find the stable area consisting of the stable cafe, public restrooms, retail shops. Here at the house you'll go back to your vehicle. It'll be a four mile drive to Antler Hill Village and the winery. Did he say winery? Okay, here we are. We begin at the Winter Garden. Next, wow, the banquet hall. Seven story high ceilings and the pipe organ. And the small table by the fireplace for when it is just the four of them. And here's the breakfast room. And the salon which is kind of like a French-style sitting area with a view of the Blue Ridge Mountains. By the way, they said no video camera, so I'm just using my phone. And here's what they call the music room. Wow, this covered room, balcony area is called the Loggia. Very nice. And here's the library. There are like 10,000 books in here, about half of Vanderbilt's collection. And here, the tapestry gallery. Flemish tapestries from the 1530s. Up the stairs we go, and even the stairs are impressive in this place. The second floor living room has the peculiarity of having paintings of both the architect and landscape artist I mentioned earlier. This is Mr. Vanderbilt's bedroom here, walk-in closet and all. Hmm, bathtub. The oak sitting room, apparently where the Vanderbilts had breakfast, and the next, uh, Mrs. Vanderbilt's room. The third floor living hall was for the guests of the house. Since the guests' rooms are nearby. Guest bedrooms. This is one of the guest bedrooms. There are 33 guest rooms and 43 bathroom, which is an incredible luxury for 1895. Hmm, a private tour perhaps? Now, down to the basement. This is called the stone hallway, uh, the foundation of the house. And that's the bowling alley, the indoor heated swimming pool with underwater lighting. There was an elevator, for the food, of course, and a refrigerator back then. Servants' dining room, not too shabby. And the laundry room. Last but not least, we go to the bachelor's wing with the billiard room. smoking room gun room 
Okay, let's head outdoors and see the gardens. We are not going to see the whole thing because, to be honest, it is hot. And we haven't even had breakfast yet. So we'll be brief, but first, a couple of pictures here in front of the building are in order, right? It is magnificent. It looks like they are getting ready for a concert. We are going to begin here at the Italian Garden. This other area is called the Shrub Garden. And here's the Walled Garden. Finally, the Rose Garden. Let's enter the conservatory. Well, it is time to go. Let's go to the winery. And I'm the bigger driver at the parking lot C. The story goes that Cedric was a Saint Bernard, the first one of many to live in the Biltmore house. This wedding is called the Plowman's Board. These are called Scottish eggs. Scotch eggs. Well, that certainly hit the right spot. Now, we're ready for the winery. This outside is a sculpture of Cedric and Vanderbilt's daughter Cornelia. This is the winery. Hmm, very pretty, this entrance. They have some barrels here, and this is probably the good stuff. Although, I have a feeling it's all ornamental. This is the good stuff. Hmm, wine library. I wonder if that's where Gary got the idea. Bistro? No. How no, many they have like outdoor? And that's the wine that we're gonna buy for a lot of money. This right here is the store. There's a little bit of a line, but soon enough we are tasting wines. And then, some bubbly at the wine bar, why not? A chatting with the couple we just met. And more charcuterie. Yeah, good times. Mm. 
Yeah, this campsite was very nice until we got neighbors. And I don't mean the ducks. That guy fishing was right on top of us until a minute ago, until I snapped at him after he got me wet. And then they moved, but they were practically leaning on our table. <sighs> Let's go drive on the Blue Ridge Parkway. Well, it is the weekend, so the campground is packed. which overlooks, oddly enough, the French Broad River. Apparently the river was broad and some Frenchman named it. Who would have thunk it, huh? Come on, yeah, you can do it. Here I slow down to catch the view. This is not something I would encourage. Yeah, apparently I am going to stop at every single overlook. We continue. We continue, gradually going up in elevation. And the views become more striking every single time. We keep stopping at all these overlooks, one more gorgeous than the next. We're going to skip this uh, next overlook, otherwise we'll never make it. Well, make it where? I don't know, because we don't have any real plans, but actually the only plan really is to return once it gets dark. We keep gaining elevation. Yes, the sun is about to set. We're running out of time. Check it out, this side. Yep, this overlook has views on both sides of the road. We want to continue a little further and check out the nearby Mount Pisgah campground. Maybe come with Minitini the trailer some other time. If this guy can do it, so can we. Going up into the clouds, following the slow moving trailer. Hey, that could be us, struggling with the steep grade. Here we are, Mount Pesca. There's our friend. Actually, I think we should get back. It is getting dark. Back to the campground. Hopefully, it will be quieter at this time. Gosh, I'm starting to sound like an old man. Morning, once again, from the Asheville East KOA. 
It is time to hit the road. Okay, this is one of those examples, one of those moments of why you should never follow the GPS blindly, especially while towing or driving an RV. Some of these roads we are about to hit can be a little scary, and a little narrow, and a little steep. Beautiful drive, though. You might ask uh, yourselves, why am I enduring this white knuckle drive? Well, you'll find out in the next video. If you have enjoyed traveling with us, make sure you are subscribed and check out my other videos. Also, share it with your friends, spread the word and leave me a comment. Now, if you really, really liked it, you have a chance to show your support at patreon.com slash travelingrobert. As always, Thank you so much for watching and see you on the road.